Welcome to this interview, the first one that is given to National Media Organization by Her Excellency Madam John Polashek, the United States Ambassador to Algeria. Your Excellency, welcome to the APS headquarters. Thank you. It's really a great honor to be with you, with you today. Thanks. And my colleague Jamal Basu joins me to conduct this interview. Jamal, welcome. Welcome. Your Excellency, you have a huge diplomatic career behind you. You served as serial member service at the U.S. Department of State. Mm -hmm. And more importantly for us, you served in different Arab countries, notably in Egypt, Libya, Tunisia, and Jordan as well. And since uh, last August, you've been in Algeria for a new diplomatic mission, if may I say. Mm -hmm. Ambassador Polashek, do you have a clear road map to boost relations between Washington and Algiers? Mm -hmm. Well, first, uh, let me again thank you for the opportunity uh, to come and, and talk with APS today. Um, I've been in Algeria for about two and a half months now, and I'm really so honored to be the ambassador of the United States of America to your country. When I look back on Algerian history, it's very clear that Algeria has been through so much in the 60 years since it first launched its struggle for independence and I deeply, deeply admire everything that the Algerian people have achieved in that time. Looking at, at the current uh, picture, I would say that U.S.-Algerian relations are the best that they have ever been. We have broad cooperation in a number of areas, and I intend to work with the Algerian government to strengthen and deepen and expand that already very good cooperation. I intend to focus on three areas. First is security cooperation and promoting regional stability. And that is not only the fight against uh, transnational terrorism, but it's also, it also means working with the Algerian government to promote peaceful solutions to the conflicts that are roiling in the region, particularly in Mali, Mali and Libya. My second area of focus is strengthening our very good uh, economic and commercial ties. American companies here are al already very present in the energy sector, but as the Algerian government seeks to diversify its economy, I think that there's a lot more that, that my government and American companies could do to support those goals. And my third area of focus is on strengthening the bonds between our two peoples, particularly through the promotion of more English language education and through, the, uh, through support for civil society here in Algeria. Uh, Ambassador, what are the key areas of cooperation mainly in economy and technology which are going to develop during your mandate here in Algiers? Well, as I said earlier, yeah. we already have a very... Can you please be more explicit? More explicit, yeah. absolutely. We already have a very good track record of cooperation in the energy and power generation sector. And I think that cooperation will be a very important basis for us to build on as the Algerian government seeks to develop its non-conventional energy resources. Um, the United States of America has a very important experience in that area. And I think we have, uh, our American companies have some of the best technology in the world. As I said earlier, it's also important that we support the Algerian government's efforts to diversify its economy. Algeria's long-term prosperity will depend on the development of, of the non-energy sectors. And I think that here too, American companies can bring a very important qualitative edge. And that is our commitment to training and capacity building. This is exactly the sort of win-win approach that the Algerian government seeks. And American companies are very interested in working here in the healthcare and pharmaceuticals sector. Um, they're also interested in working in information and communications technology, which is the driving force of, of the global commerce these days, and also the services sector. At the end of October, Algerian a business delegation had been in the United States in mm -hmm. tour to present the business investment opportunities in Algeria to the American potential investors. Uh, do you believe, Ambassador, honestly speaking, that the moment has come, as you said, to find out a cooperation, to build up a cooperation, but out of gas and oil Absolutely. industry? Absolutely. And I think that there's been some very interesting progress in this regard just in the last few months. Um, first of all, uh, Prime Minister Salal, when he was in Washington in August for the U.S.-Africa summit, brought with him several uh, key ministers here from Algeria, and they had excellent meetings with uh, major U.S. corporations in Washington. And that, I think, set the stage for the very successful Doing Business in Algeria roadshow that Minister Bouchoireb just led to Washington and Chicago um, in, in October. And um, the trip was very well received, both by the U.S. government and the U.S. private sector. 
Um, I understand that more than 30 Algerian companies were part of that mission. Um, and also, very importantly, I think uh, Minister Bouchouara made some interesting comments about the Algerian government's desire to further open up its economy. Um, when you look at the situation here, it's clear that this is a challenging business environment and Algeria needs to compete on the, the global scale right now. It's, it's a very interlocked uh, world. Um, and the most recent Doing Business World Bank Doing Business report here in Algeria indicated that there are some challenges. But at the same time, there are very positive indications that the Algerian government is prepared to address those, those challenges. And I look forward to working to support the Algerian government's efforts to improve the business climate here. I would say I, I can't address the expectations on the Algerian side. I can address the expectations on the American side. And when I look back over the last year, we've had a number of very important exchanges. Um, and certainly on the diplomatic front, which always supports the economic front, we had the Secretary of State John Kerry here in April. We had Secretary of Energy Muniz here in June, leading a delegation of more than 80 American companies for the Algiers International Trade Fair. And then of course, as I mentioned earlier, we had Prime Minister Salal in the United States, followed by the October Doing Business uh, Roadshow with Minister Bouchouareb. All of these diplomatic exchanges have helped promote uh, further economic cooperation. Again, looking back over the last year, we've had some major milestones. First, General Electric signed a multi-billion dollar deal to build a gas turbine factory here in Algeria. Um, and this is one of just seven factories like this anywhere in the world. This is hugely important because it will allow Algeria to meet its own energy production needs, to become totally self-sufficient, and then also to become a base for export to the rest of Africa, which is huge. Um, GE also has been very present in the healthcare sector. It's working with five Algerian hospitals to upgrade their administrative and technological systems, which is part of the ongoing reform efforts uh, with the Ministry of Health. Um, also in the healthcare sector, Varian uh, uh, Medical Systems is working on providing cancer um, treatment and detection equipment. And finally, Boeing just signed a deal to sell 10 aircraft to Air Algerie, which will support economic development, not just here in Algeria, but increase the Algerian government's ability to serve as an economic hub and a force for integration in the region, which is also very important. Yeah. Let's move on to security issue. As you, as you mentioned at the beginning of the interview, it's been one of the, the topic of mm -hmm. your agenda here in Algeria. Many senior American officials have welcomed the role of Algeria in fighting terrorism. Mm -hmm. How do you think, uh, Your Excellency, that this cooperation could be forged in the light of the new threats and the current security situation in the region, uh, notably following the consequence of what is called the Arab, Square, mm -hmm. Arab Spring? Mm -hmm. Well, first, I hope you'll add me to the long list of U.S. officials who have uh, commended Algeria's strong support for the fight against transnational terrorism. Um, Algeria really has been a steadfast, excellent partner in all of our, com uh, our efforts to combat counterterrorism and to promote regional stability. Um, it's no doubt that this is an incredibly challenging time for the region. And the United States government very much shares the Algerian government's views that there can be no military solution to the conflicts here in this area, particularly in Mali and Libya. Sorry to interrupt you, Ambassador, but hey, this is the point. This is the bottom line. Mm -hmm. how, could we, how could we, between Algeria and the United States, to, uh, to work on together in favor of political solution, not just military ones? Well, we already are working very closely, uh, our two governments, the Algerian and U.S. governments, uh, in these areas. First, um, the United States government very much appreciates the efforts um, of the Algerian government to launch and facilitate the ongoing inter-Malian dialogue. Uh, we very much appreciate their efforts, and in fact, I have a, a senior colleague here from Washington this week who's, who's here and will be meeting with Algerian officials later today to discuss that and express our very strong support for the Mali efforts. On Libya, we continue to consult very closely with the Algerian government on that issue. And we very much appreciate the efforts of the Algerian government to work closely with the United Nations. UN, uh, the UN uh, Secretary General's Special Representative for Libya, Bernardino Leon, um, knows Algeria very well, consults regularly, and we're very pleased to see that there is close coordination underway uh, between Algeria and the United Nations to support Mr. Bernardino Leon's efforts. Uh, Ambassador, the United States and the international community were respectively late in getting aware of the terrorist threat, whereas Algeria has not stopped during the 20 years war warning from this phenomena. 
Some observers say that this international campaign against terrorism has not set borders between Islam and terrorism and between terrorism and struggling for independence. Do you agree with this statement? I, I don't agree with that statement. Um, terrorists are despicable criminals who have no respect for human life or basic human values. Um, and it's, a, it's wrong, completely wrong, to associate terrorism with one issue or one religion. And let me be very clear that the United States government views Islam as a religion of peace. And in fact, when you look back at our very earliest diplomatic history, one of the first international treaties that we signed here in North Africa in 1796 said very clearly that the U.S. has, quote, no enmity toward, Mus toward Muslims. And then the treaty goes on to say that religion should never be the pretext or the reason for disturbing the peace between two countries. This was a founding principle of the United States of America's foreign policy. It remains one of our core principles to this day. What can the United States do to show this on practical side? First of all, I want to make it very clear that violence is never the answer. Um, and I think that the United States government and the Algerian government are in 100% agreement on that, that front. Um, we always encourage people on any side of a conflict to sit down peacefully and work out their differences without resorting to violence. I would never ever condone the use of violence in any situation. Let's back to the uh, diplomatic effort made by Algeria to find out political solution to, for the crisis in Mali and Libya. What kind of support can the United States provide to the Algerian effort to promote, let me quote from, uh, from your word, peace and stability in the region? When I take a very careful look at, at U.S.-Algerian history and bilateral relations, you know, Algeria is a country of very skilled diplomats. And it's important to remember that in my country's own history, Algeria played a very important role in helping us solve one of our most difficult problems. And that was the Iran hostage crisis. And the American people and government are eternally grateful to the terrific work done by the Algerian government in securing the release of our hostages in 1981. So when I think about the current situation, I think about the wonderful skills of Algerian diplomats. And I'm really excited uh, and honored to have the opportunity to work with them as we try to tackle together these very difficult problems. Um, so as I said earlier, we continue to support the efforts of the Algerian government with the Inter-Malian dialogue. And as we look at Libya, um, again, I have to reiterate my government's commitment uh, to a peaceful political solution there. It's very clear that there can be no military solution there. Uh, we're consulting very closely with the Algerian government, and we're very pleased that the Algerian government is working very closely with the United Nations as it tries to identify and implement a political solution there. Ambassador, excuse me to, be, to want to be more precise on that point. Which kind of, of effort can the United States provide to Algeria uh, to, pr to promote the, the inter-Malian dialogue concretely mm -hmm. by acts? Well, we've been offering our, our political support for quite some time in, in the months since Algeria launched this initiative. And as I mentioned earlier, I have a colleague here from Washington today. Uh, she's been here this week um, meeting with the parties who are involved in the talks. And she'll be meeting later today uh, with the Algerian Foreign Ministry. So I don't want to, uh, to um, steal her thunder or in any way um, um, say something that, that's really not within my, my bailiwick. She's the one who's leading um, our efforts on this, and, and, uh, but I can affirm with 100% certainty that we fully support the Algerian efforts and we're very grateful for everything that they're doing. What about Libya? Uh, how could Nice say back up their joint effort to gather the Libyan rivals on the same table? We knew that situ situ security situation there is um, is warning, and the United States lost one of the ambassadors there. Well, uh, first I should clarify: not only did we lose an ambassador, we lost three of our other colleagues. So the events in Benghazi were a horrible tragedy on on many many different levels. Um, as I said earlier, we continue to consult very closely with the Algerian government. Um, we recognize that Libya's neighbors have the most at stake as the situation in Libya continues to deteriorate. Uh, it's very clear that um, as transnational terrorist groups uh, establish a foothold there, they pose the greatest risk to all of the neighbors, including Algeria. So for this reason, we have been consulting very closely with Algeria for quite some time. 
And when you look back to um, the September 22nd ministerial meeting that Secretary of State Kerry hosted in New York, uh, we of course invited um, the Algerian Foreign Minister La Mamra to participate. And that has set the tone for the sort of coordination that continues to exist to this day. Um, U.S. policy is that uh, we're counting on the United Nations to lead the efforts to find a political solution there, and we really welcome the Algerian government's efforts to coordinate its work directly with the United Nations. Uh, Ambassador, let's move to another issue, mm -hmm. Western Sahara issue. Yes. As you know, in occupied Western Sahara, the situation of human rights has become worrying for the international community. Mm -hmm. How does, or how do United States monitor the situation? Um, human rights is a concern, a major policy and concern for the United States all over the world. And we are committed to sustained international engagement and independent and impartial monitoring of the human rights situation all over the world, including, of course, in Western Sahara and the refugee camps near Tinduf. And we very much appreciated the efforts of the Algerian government over the last year uh, to facilitate human rights monitoring in the camps near Tinduf. As you mentioned just now, it's committed to solving this issue within the UN framework. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but UNESCO said hasn't showed since several years they are in favor of implementing the Sahrawi people's right to self-determination. In a sense, it does appear that United State is for the maintenance of the status quo between Morocco and Polisario Front, doesn't it? I fundamentally disagree with your analysis of United States policy. United States policy toward Western Sahara has remained consistent for many years. We fully support the UN-led process, which is led by Ambassador Christopher Ross, the Secretary General's personal envoy for Western Sahara, and its efforts to implement a peaceful, mutually agreed solution to this conflict that respects the human rights of all people who have been involved in the dispute. And we continue to work, work to urge all parties to work toward a solution. Ambassador, always in the same context. The international community welcomed the U.S. initiative for the expansion of the main source mandate to human rights monitoring in Western Sahara. Was the U.S. initiative sincere or just a mere test, especially because the draft resolution was withdrawn without explanation? As I said earlier, the United States considers uh, human rights issues to be among our most important priorities all over the world. And we are committed to international engagement and sustained independent monitoring of human rights issues all over the world, including in Western Sahara and in the refugee camps near Tindouf. Excuse me, Ambassador, on that point, there is a change in the position of the United States. There, 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 there was an uni initiative for the enlargement of the mandate, then the, the project was withdrawn without any explanation. I can't comment on the diplomatic uh, discussions that took place behind closed doors uh, when that uh, uh, project was under consideration. But what I can do is affirm that the United States is committed to human rights issues all over the world, including in Western Sahara and the refugee camps near Tindouf. Can we, can we see another U.S. initiative to monitor the human rights situation in Western Sahara? I can't comment on what our, our plans might or might not be for the United Nations. I'm the U.S. Ambassador here to Algeria. But what I can do is affirm, again, our commitment to support for human rights all over the world, including in Western Sahara and in the camps here in Algeria near Tindouf. By the way, the American Foundation, Robert Kennedy for Justice and Human Rights, denounced in its report latest report, let's me quote, what they called the continuing violation of human rights in occupied Western Sahara. Is the U.S. administration aware of what is happening as a human rights violation in occupied Western Sahara? As I said earlier, we monitor the human rights situation in many countries and many areas all over the world. And as I'm sure you know, we also publish a, an enormous uh, annual report on human rights practices. So human rights, continues to be at the top of our priority list. We continue to be engaged. We continue to push for international engagement and independent, sustained monitoring of the situation in Western Sahara and in the camps here near Tindouf. But you take into account, into consideration, such report coming from the U.S. Foundation? 
when we look at human rights issues, we study the whole range of literature that exists on all of these topics. And you know, when I was a junior diplomat in Tunisia, it was my job to draft the human rights report there. And I can tell you that I consulted closely uh, with human rights activists in country, with human rights activists all over the world. I searched, there was no internet at that time, but I searched all of the, the periodicals and reports that I could find. So of course, as part of our, our commitment to promoting human rights all over the world, the U.S. relies on a wide variety of sources. So, Your Excellency, certainly you have few words in Arabic to say to Algerians. Taban, ana mabsuta jidden li alakun huna fi aljazair, mithal asafira alamrakia fi aljazair. Andakum bilad jamil jidden, sharaf kabir li alakun huna. Wa ma ijazatkum sa akun plusieurs mots en français. Uh, vraiment, uh, pour nous, uh, aux États-Unis, nous voudrions travailler avec le gouvernement et le peuple algérien dans uh, trois domaines. D'abord, c'est d'approfondir notre coopération uh, pour promouvoir uh, la sécurité régionale. Uh, deuxièmement, c'est d'établir de des liens plus proches sur le plan économique et commercial. Uh, et troisièmement, c'est de rapprocher nos deux peuples avec uh, la promotion de la langue anglaise ici en Algérie. Shukran Katir, inshallah, nashufkum. Shukran, Shukran. 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 Your Excellency, Joan Polashik, the United States Ambassador to Algeria, thank you very much indeed for your time. And my thanks is also due to my colleague Jamal Basu, thank who's you. taken part of this interview. And for you, thanks for watching and goodbye.